Hey everybody, I'm JJ, you're watching Reality Survival, and today we're gonna talk about, we're gonna do a little follow-up to the video I did yesterday, uh, which was kind of just an ad hoc impromptu video talking about freezers. Um, so I put together some notes just to go a little bit more in depth to freezers, um, and talking about like which freezers are best for preppers and that kind of thing, or just really best for anybody. Um, and uh, I've got some notes, so we got, one section, we'll just kind of talk about pros and cons of chest freezers and upright freezers. Uh, talk about some general tips for using freezers. And then we'll talk about what kind of foods, foods can be frozen. Um, so there were a bunch of comments on the last video that were really good tips. So I'm gonna incorporate a bunch of those uh, from folks who watch the channel. And then um, I also saw another video from Free Cheap or oh, let me turn that off um something like that jordan page her youtube channel she had a bunch of great uh tips too so let me shut this off real quick um uh -huh, see i know all right there so um so you guys can check that video out too if you want. But anyway, uh, so chest freezers. Uh, put a picture in here what a chest freezer looks like. It is essentially one that kind of lays down. It's a big open void. Sometimes it'll have some wire racks and stuff in it. Um, and then you have the upright freezers that stand upright. They give you some different shelves and stuff like that. And they're kind of uh, both on the opposite ends of, of, of a spectrum and, and what can be used. We'll go through the pros for the chest freezer first. Uh, they are more efficient as a general rule, if all things are being equal. That is because the items are tight, uh, packed tighter together. And I would say that these are probably the best for people who have a lot of bulk meat. Like if you're a hunter and you know, you've got a bunch of elk or moose or venison, something along those lines. Uh, or even if you buy like a half a side of beef, you know, or you have a whole bunch of ground beef that you want to put in or something like that. Those are probably the best for that. Um, the cons to the chest freezers are that it's a lot more difficult to get to the items at the bottom. And you tend to, or at least I have in the past, tend to forget about what's down there. Uh, and then not use it for a really long time. And if it's not properly packaged, you can end up getting some waste because of freezer burn and different things like that. Um, with upright freezer, it is much more convenient. Uh, foods tend not to be forgotten about because you can readily see them. You're gonna use them more often, that kind of thing. And these are probably best for items that you do use more often, you know, like maybe pizza, ice cream, vegetables, fruits or berries for smoothies or, you know, those kind of things, just those, uh, those things that you tend to, to, to get in and use a little bit more frequently. The cons to these is that if you purchase a base model, then they're gonna probably, I thought I'd turn that off. <laughs> Hang on a second. Uh, there, this one. Um, then if you purchase a base model and it's not a very efficient model, then it's going to use a little bit more electricity. And so from a purely power consumption standpoint, you really, if you want to make a comparison, it's not really fair to just say one is better than the other, because even if you have a cheap chest freezer model, like I've got, it is not very energy efficient. It was like $200 or something like that. I bought it and it does not have a very efficient uh, pump and, and compressor and all that kind of stuff in it. Um, and whereas the stand-up freezers were a lot more expensive and they are actually a little bit more efficient as far as energy consumption in normal times. Now, if you're looking from an SHTF kind of perspective, from a long-term preparedness perspective, the chest freezer may still have some advantages because it pushes all the meat together really tightly. Um, so, you know, you just have to kind of figure out what's best for you, uh, in that regard. But let's talk about some tips for using freezers. So number one, and this was a, a tip from somebody who was watching, and I think we've talked about it in some videos in the past too, but you can fill milk jugs or two liter bottles almost full of water. You want to leave a little bit of expansion space at the top and you can put those in the freezer and fill up any empty voids in the freezer 
That way there'll be more cold mass inside of the freezer and it will stay frozen longer in case you have a power outage. Um, so, you know, and you can also have some big blocks of ice uh, in case you, um, you know, you ever need to ice, you know, sore muscles or something like that too. Uh, let's see here. Number two is only open your freezers once a week. And that, what you can do, this came from Lady T Survival. She has a YouTube channel, you can check her out. Um, she said that you make a shopping list each week, you get the meat out that you're gonna need for the week, and then that way you don't have to go back into it for another whole week, and you're not opening and closing the freezer every day, allowing it to lose uh, its, you know, its, its cold air, and causing it to work more. I thought that was a great idea. Um, and then you just take the meat that you're going to use for the week, put it in your freezer or in your refrigerator because you're going to be using it pretty quickly. Um, okay, number three is if you use a chest freezer, um, put the, this was also uh, from what was it? It was an EMT rail fan, I think was the name of the subscriber. Um, if you use a chest freezer, put each different type of meat uh, in a different cloth grocery bag and then that's going to make it a little easier to find the items to get access to. So that's especially if you have like a like a chest freezer, it's, it's a way to make them a little bit more organized. You can have just multiple different like grocery bags and you know maybe have the pork in one, the beef in another, or the ground beef in one and the steaks in a different one or you know something along those lines. Um, you could also use plastic milk crates or cardboard boxes or wire rack containers, you know, anything like that. But just basically the idea is, is have some things set in there, then you can do multiple layers of those, whatever kind of containers you have to use all of the space in the chest freezer. Um, the next one is, uh, and I think Lady T is also the one that brought this one up again. Um, you can also wrap freezers in foam board insulation like that hard foam board insulation a couple inches thick and tape up the seams and that's going to help make the, the freezer more efficient and use less energy and it'll stay cold longer if the power goes out. The only thing I would say with doing that, if you do do that, is make sure that the, the, the bottom and the area wherever the natural venting is for the compressor and all that kind of stuff is, probably make sure that that remains open so that it's properly uh, can, you know, operated and vented and all that the way that the manufacturer intended. Okay, um, number five, the next, next tip here for using these is you may want to mark the date that you get the items uh, on it with a Sharpie or a large black marker or something like that. That way you know how long the items have been in there and you can use the older items first. Number six is to save space, you can remove the packaging. And I think this tip came from the Jordan Pages channel. Um, and then if, if necessary, just cut off the instructions and tape it to you know, the plastic or whatever. With, with this, I would say if you're gonna do that, you may wanna make sure that the wrapping that comes from the factory is sufficient enough to keep it from getting freezer burn. Um, you might need to add a, an additional layer of like a Ziploc freezer bag or something like that uh, just to keep it protected. Okay, number seven is break bulk items down into family sized portions. Uh, we do this a lot, especially if we're not getting from a local butcher where we're having everything, you know, um, cut and wrapped into the, the sizes that we ask for. Like if we get those, the big tubes of bulk um, uh, ground beef, then we'll chop those up into like one or one and a half pound uh, bags and then just kind of flat, pack them down flat and then freeze those individually. And that way you can just pull out what you need for a meal and go right to it and you can just leave all the other ones in there. You don't have to mess with, you know, trying to, to cut up that tube or whatever. So that works pretty good. You can do the same thing with, uh, you know, like big, big bags of broccoli and big, you know, berries of fruit, and, you know, bags of uh, frozen fruit and stuff like that. Next one is if you have OCD, <laughs> then you can make a, uh, then you can make a inventory list of all of your items to keep track of what's in there, what you're using. That way you know, like, okay, it's time we buy a little bit more chicken. We're getting kind of low on, you know, ground beef or whatever the case may be. I've never done that personally because I just always kind of do a visual inventory, but you could write it down if you wanted to. Um, you probably want to, as far as where to store the items, you generally probably want to take the meats and cheeses, put those towards the bottom, and then take other items like, um, 
veggies, fruits, and breads kind of towards the top because it's a little colder in the bottom and that's going to help, um, you know, really get a, a good solid freeze on the stuff more towards the bottom and uh, it's a little bit warmer up towards top so it doesn't have to be quite as frozen. I'm not sure that there's that big a temperature differential inside of a freezer per se, but if you wanted to break it down that way you could. Okay, so the last part here is uh, foods that can be frozen. So fish, chicken, beef, pork, uh, pretty much any kind of meat. Um, you can also do cooked meat or raw meat. You know, just if, again, if you look in the freezer section of you know, going down Costco and you see, you know, like cooked uh, chicken tenders or whatever, the, the, you can, if they can freeze it, you can freeze it in your uh, freezer as well. You can also freeze lunch meat, hot dog. <clears throat> hot dogs, excuse me, all kinds of stuff. Um, number two, dairy, butter, cheese, uh, sliced or shredded cheese. Um, that tends to work the best. If you freeze blocks of cheese, it might be a little more crumbly than it normally is. Um, you can also uh, freeze cream cheese, sour cream, ricotta cheese um, with those. You might also get a little texture change, um, but they're still good for cooking and all that kind of stuff. All right, vegetables, we talked about that. Fruits, berries, avocados, guacamole. You can freeze avocados whole. Um, let's see here, vegetables, we said that already. Oh, bread, a lot of people don't know you can freeze bread, you can. Um, if you are thawing it out and the crust is maybe a little, um, little harder or a little crusty <laughs> around the edges, you can just wrap that up with a damp paper towel, put it in the microwave for like 10 seconds, cook it, and then it'll be good to go. Um, let's see here, oh, uh, yogurt is another one, yeast, nuts, uh, chocolate, freezer meals, like to, meals like we tend to typically like to freeze is uh, chili and lasagna, if we're making some chili we'll make like a double batch or a triple batch uh, and then freeze the rest of it into smaller individual, you know, or like family size portions. Um, and then we can just pull it out and, and heat it up, you know, for dinner real quick on, you know, a night that we didn't have a lot of time for planning or whatever. Um, lasagna is also great, you know, let both leftover and, um, and uh, you know, fresh right out of the box. Uh, hummus, uh, cakes and cookies, garden seeds is another thing. You can do garden seeds, put them in there as well. And basically the general rule of thumb is, is if you're walking down the aisle at a grocery store and you see it being frozen there, then you can freeze it at home. So that is my a little more comprehensive list talking about freezers along with a bunch of tips from subscribers. So thank you guys for adding those comments. Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions or any other things to think about with regard to freezers and what is the best for uh, preppers to use and, and what are some of the pros and cons, put those down in the comments below so we can all learn from them as well. Thanks for watching guys. As always, don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe guys.